morning, everyone, and welcome, welcome to Natik in Oak Grove, California, and NatikYarns.com coming to you live on this beautiful, crisp Thursday. I stopped at a store on the way to work this morning to pick up some caffeinated beverages because stitches just happened, and it's funny, every morning I wake up feeling fine, and then about halfway to work, I'm like, I'm still tired. Like, it hits <laughs> me after I've been up for about an hour that my brain goes, no, you still need caffeine. So I went to pick up caffeine and I'm standing in line behind this couple and the lady's looking around. She's like, do we need batteries? No. Do we need a flashlight? No. Do we need this? <laughs> no. And finally she's like, well, but that storm is coming today. And I'm like, what storm? Are we There's supposed a, to have like yes. a epic deluge? My There's palm a... tree's finally going to fall over in the wind storm? There's a big one coming, we yes. Yes, if right? If you choose to fall over, please fall in the street. I hate that tree. You guys have no idea how much <laughs> I hate that tree. It has 20 foot fronds. I have to cut them in four pieces to fit them in my wow. green waste bin, and they still stick out of the top. It, light rain starting in 25 minutes. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> the worst thing I ever did is turn on that app because it's no, always I love wrong, that. too. Like, sometimes it says that, and I look out my window, and it's already raining. Well, so I'm like, yeah. starting. It's happening now. <laughs> I guess the other day, it's funny, because my mom lives in, up by Redding, but, which is like three hours from here, for those of you who are not local Californians. Um, she got, like, a little alert that, like, the whole Sacramento Valley had this, like, warning of, like, quarter sized hail and I'm like no didn't happen it 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 wasn't quarter sized but it did happen on Monday I drove through hail but they were my like my neighborhood didn't get any they hail. were like half a pea sized I yeah. mean you know splatting on the window yeah like my neighborhood got nothing it's like no nothing so was... I'm like okay so what are we in for today no I know friends weather friends out my tree watch out what street. you add there you go <laughs> take out my tree into the street because it will not be an inconvenience for anyone until the city comes and deals with it because our street is like a u into the other street mm, so yeah. everybody behind it can go the other way <laughs> <laughs> yeah fall on anything important that's it kathy take got the tree kathy got tiny hail also well see my neighborhood got nothing that's happened a couple times lately that people are like it's pouring out and i'm like yeah, it can not, it can pour here and my house is dry, Stephen says. I'm like, uh, okay. Yeah, it's weird, like, the path. And my house is clearly not in the main path that most of the storms take, because nothing. Like, they're like, it's pouring. I'm like, it's not even sprinkling. It's like, living, it's like living in Fresno. The storm skirts around the Fresno-Madera area, and I'm, I'm just watching it going, oh, no rain down there, but we're, you know, Lucky monsoon Lucky. here. No, they want the rain. No. Rain runs downhill, aren't they downhill for me? Not enough. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Did we we never found a sample? Did we, we did not yet. It's here somewhere. Karen, uh, help. <laughs> it's here somewhere. We'll find it. We're still unpacking from stitches, so the sample for the grand prize is somewhere. Actually I know where it is. It's on Boss Lady's desk. O M G. That's okay. right. We got a lot put away looking for it, so So just dawned on me where it was. For our grand prize, we have Danielle's pattern Fuchsia Meadows, but instead of the lighter weight of Merino Cloud and Beaded Silk and Sequins that we originally used with it, it is knit at a worsted weight gauge. So you can easily do the scarf version, maybe even cast on a repeat wider with the two included skeins. We have Noro Malvinus in color 13, which is a pretty like soft cafe au lait kind of color, tans and creams. Cafe au lait is perfect. And then the rich deep black, which is color 20. Sorry, Thank I'm you. just trying to get this <laughs> and the yarn in well, the same um, picture. In okay, it. there we go. There. The yarn's too fluffy. It doesn't all fit. But so Malvinus is a 100% wool. It is 330 yards per skein, and it's very soft. These are clearly a soft breed of sheep. 
I don't know what breed. It just says wool on the tag. They're yes. Malvinus sheep. Yeah, I don't think we'll that's such a that. thing. What well, is what? actually know the little description will answer our question. Malvinus is a blend of Falkland wool from Las Islas Malvinas off the coast of Argentina. They are Malvinus sheep. Yes. That's funny. Well, yeah, Falkland sheep. <laughs> is that like the islands? Like the Falkland Islands? Yeah, I never say that name because it comes out wrong, so I'm like, I just don't do that one. But um... I think so, because then it's specifically Las Islas Malvinas, which I believe would be one of the islands mm. in the Falkland Islands. Okay. I'm going to go with yes. I did not do my geography lesson before video this morning. I'm sorry. So you get these two luscious skeins of 100% wool, the pattern... And how you get entered into the grand prize is every time you make a purchase from the 1st through the 15th of March, you are going to get one entry. So all of you who purchase during Stitches, you Whoa, all Whoa, that's a lot of entries. We're going to have to figure out how to kick out the <laughs> name of Stitches West on, on the unknown peoples. I don't know if the wheel has enough room if we don't do that. We might break the wheel of names. Uh, but so every purchase made, whether it was here in the store, online, over the phone, you get an entry every time you check out. It's cumulative. So if you buy from us three times, you get three entries. If you buy from us 10 times, you get 10 entries. And then we will, so the boss lady gets to do it. Um, we will draw on a Friday, March 17th for this one. Thank you. Thank you, everyone already oh, sharing you guys are ahead of the game then for our daily prize we have one for the crocheters we have our pattern niveau but niveau savant <laughs> i'm not good at foreign Air. languages i apologize <laughs> um and i'm a little tongue-tied this morning apparently and we've actually paired it with the same yarn that we crocheted the sample out of this beautiful skein of noro you have enough to make the smaller cowl size in this skein. Really fun, easy crochet pattern. This one's actually part of our Hooked on Crochet series of on-demand classes, which are perfect for learning to crochet or brushing up your skills if it's been a while. Um, and this one, how you get entered in the daily drawing is by doing what tons of you are already doing. Just, yeah. My clips are wrong. It's a little misplaced right now. That's better. If it stays. There. Okay, so if you interact with our video, you get entries. So if you react with all of these lovely bubbles down here, then you get one entry per a reaction. If you comment on the video, you're gonna get five entries per comment. And then if you share the video with this handy little arrow in the corner to your friends and to your stories or the quickest, you could send it to someone in Messenger under more options. You can share to somebody else's feed, to a group, to a page, wherever you share, just come back to that day's video and comment shared to and where, and then you get 11 entries per share. And you basically have until about an hour before the next day's video to get your entries in because that is when I go in and click a bunch of buttons and get the prize picker ready. So we'll come over to the comment picker and see who our lucky winner is. Cindy Fasano, congratulations. Well, we know this might be the one. So we know you're local. So next time you come in, let us know you have a prize in the cabinet and we will get it out for you. And then you can have fun crocheting with my favorite pretty purple. Quick peek here of the yarn accessories that we have. Because these things are awesome. Just put your yarn on there and you spin. And it's not super, you know, super spinny so that when you pull the yarn, it doesn't go woo and go crazy. I do appreciate 
appreciate that. Because, yeah. Yeah, some of them are a little too fast. And yep. your yarn winds back on itself. Right, but these, as soon as you let go, they stop, which is, I could spin this one all day. The pink and the yellow, my favorite. And the yarn box opens and closes. And it's got this neat little split right there so you can switch yarn balls, which is awesome. And we do have them in the pink peony as well, but that would require a road trip to show you those. But we will come back to the handy dandy video here. I'm gonna pop in a link. Aren't they, Maria? That is the sunrise. Under if you look under lemon wood, I will link it in the collective after the video. And it is also linked on yesterday's video. So if you want a full rundown of the lemon wood products, watch yesterday's video. And we talk all about all the different styles of items and the different designs. Okay, so today's video has a theme of the items that were our biggest hits at Stitches. And some of them are small items and some of them are big items. But we have some left of a lot of them because we did order deep to make sure <laughs> that our regulars would still get them even if we didn't have time to talk about them before Stitches. So some of them we did, some of them we did not. But first up, we have one of my easily amused favorites. <laughs> we got these fabulous new pens that twist to retract. What's Open the and close. Of retract? Uh, it has a like rubber gripper here so that it's comfortable in your hand. And then it has this extra fun bonus. There's a stylus tip on the end, so you can use it on your phone screen. I tested it on my iPhone. Yes, it works. Me too. On mine, it's awesome. If you click it though, ta da! Look, our logo lights up. Turn it off and back on. I love that. This is the only time I get to be like click, click, click. No, I know, right? Like, Stop it! <laughs> I'm a pen clicker, but you know, when someone else does it, I know, it's, why it's is difficult. it only fun when you're doing it and I, everybody I think else it's annoying? It's something to do with the actual physical motion, I, I think. Yes. And then it, of course, has the little clip here, so you can clip it, like, to the front of your notebook, put it in your pocket. But I love that it's a twist to retract because, I don't know about you guys, but I regularly accidentally clicked my pens in my bag. Mm-hmm. And click, accidentally clicking it and have the light turn on, not That's a big okay. deal accidentally clicking it and having the pen pop out then it's writing all over your stuff so i really appreciate it's a twist because those don't really escape and write all over your stuff yes when you get yours i love this it comes with a little plastic cap over the stylus part so that way it's not going to get clicked on its way to you basically it's not going to click get clicked till you're ready for it. You just pop this little plastic cap off and then you have access to the stylus and the light turner on your button. <laughs> so these are just a fun little add-on that you can, like, if you're here and you're almost at that $15 amount, you can add a pen. I know quite a few people bought like three to five of them. Mm -hmm. like one for every project bag. Yeah, I had somebody get some. They go, oh, I got to get these for my girlfriends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So some people got them for their friends. Some people got multiples for themselves because being a selfish knitter is okay. Yes. Uh, and being a selfish pen hoarder is also okay. <laughs> Thank goodness, because I am. Right? So those are the fun and fabulous light-up pens, which were a huge hit for a quick little small item. Then we have an item that requires a demo. Let me switch my links out here. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, good morning. All right, so one of the kind of surprise hits because I had two people come to me at the register and say, I'm so glad you have these. I came here hoping I could find them and was about to give up, I thought nobody was going to have them here, is the row counter chains. 
So this looks like a bag of stitch markers in one through 10, but it is actually a chain with a stitch marker ring in between each number. So these numbers in here are actually all attached. I might have to come around so that I can demo right side up for you guys. I can turn After the I camera. Untangle <laughs> my yarn here first. Well, I think here, I'll just, just. Oh, okay. So yeah, that'll work. My particular project only has a two row repeat right now, but this is just for demo's sake. So I'm going to work my pattern up to the marker. So I'm on row one right now, but we're gonna pretend that I'm on row five because that is what my ring is above on my sweater. Because I did not have a project handy that had enough rows on it that I remembered to bring to work with me. Because I have one of these on my Who You Gonna Shawl project at home, but I forgot to bring it. Yeah, my cowl of mine is at home too. All right, we're All right, so there. we're at the marker. So normally you would just slip your marker over like this, but I need to mark that I'm going to be on row six when I come back. So I'm going to slip my right needle through the ring in the center of the two numbers below the one on the needle and then take my left needle out and because i have to knit the next stitch i'm just gonna flick this guy to the front and keep knitting now also if you have a pattern where you have multiple repeats you can use the included pin to mark what repeat you're on. So let's say that I am on repeat number three. I would just put this pin right above the three, like that. So you can see, there he is. He's it's attached. The, the little ring so it doesn't interfere on the big ring. Yeah, you've got your connector ring between each um, snag-free smooth ring that is your marker ring. These fit up to size 10 needles. So if you put the pin in the connector ring, then you have continue to have more room for your needle tip. Then if you have a project that has more than 10 rows, you take another pin. So like you can color code your pins. So we'll use purple. And let's say I'm actually on row 16. So I've got this on the six. So I'm gonna put this above the one so the purple pin is my tens marker basically. So then if I had to go to row 26, I would put it above the two. So my pin marks the tens, so 20. And then the number on the needle marks the ones spot, so 26. That's cool. Right? And one can never have too many stitch markers. So I know you all have a bunch of those that you can use for this. So you guys saw modeled on my project, the gold mirror, which was a brand new color that we brought in for stitches. And then the first one I showed you is the pink glitter. It's kind of a fuchsia or magenta pink. They hand paint these, you guys, so oh, that wow. the numbers are nice and crisp to read because glitter acrylic does not like acrylic doesn't burn, it melts. So it doesn't create hmm. something that you can actually easily see automatically like with the wood ones. Oh, so it's burning the top layer off. Yeah. Got it. But because on this, you can't really see that it burns the top layer off. They paint them for you so that they're easy to read. So this is the wood set right here. And then, and then we have the purple glitter, which is kind of like an indigo blue violet kind of purple. Definitely purple for us purple people. Really one for every project. So like I, I know, right? Like all the colors because why not? Yes. Because I definitely don't only have one project going at a time. I'm not sure I've ever done that beyond when I very, very first started to knit. 
Oh, what? Only work on one? Yeah, project? to yeah. only have one. Same. That didn't last very long. Really, once I discovered a yarn store, it was all over. Yeah. We are a good influence. I just need more needles. Always. Oh, yes. Karen, the baby's taking a nap. Yes. Because we can't find the stand <laughs> yet. Okay. So that row counter chain and that little purple pin kind of transitions us into the next item. These were a hit because it's an inexpensive item. So if you, like lots of people were like, I am not buying yarn at Stitches. I have too much <laughs> yarn already. I'm only here for accessories. So we added these fun locking stitch markers. There are 144 of them in here for the price that you would normally get like 16, 20, somewhere in there. I'm like, it should take at least a week for the couch to eat half of them, right? right? <laughs> and then lots of different colors. So you can use them for color coding. Like, was it Sharon that showed us that she like marked on the top oh, of yes. the box? Like that she used purple for knit two together and blue for SSK and yellow for yarn over. Like she uses them to mark different things and so she color coded and wrote with like a sharpie on the box you could get little sticker labels from like the dollar store if you didn't want to write directly on the box <laughs> Kathy <laughs> but there are 144 of them in here so you can color code to your heart's content I like to do this thing where I just put them on in like color order so it's like you know they're in rainbow order or like I'll mark both of my side <laughs> seams on my sweater with like my current project doesn't have these it has rings but like the side seams are both pink the center spine is yellow so I like color code what I'm marking too I color code raglan lines mm -hmm. yeah so it's like you can use these to get a better layout of where you're at on your project so you're not losing track of what you're doing especially when a sweater is in the round and your beginning round is in the center back or center front because then you have sleeve markers and sleeve markers and then you have the, what's this one in the middle and where am i and now i know beginning of round my sweater and while well, i have fun dangly ones on here because why not it's like i have fun dangly ones on marking the front panel but then I have ring ones. I have a ring and a dangly marking the side seams. Mm -hmm. And I have two rings marking the center seam. So it's like you just do something consistent so you know what section of your sweater you're in. For sure. And then you don't screw up as much because you don't have to pay attention. As much. There's always that caveat. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you don't pay attention at all, you end up doing, like, Anna and unknitting a row, because that was supposed to be a purl row, not a knit row, but... Yeah. My sweater, I put a row in, I took half a row out, put another row in, took out two rows, you know, it was, um... That happened. Adventurous, because I wasn't territory. paying attention, and things were not appropriately labeled for me to pay attention to. Zoning out gets us into lots of trouble, um, as does really good TV shows where you're sucked in and you're like, oh, shoot, I wasn't paying attention. Just to share with you guys, we do it too. We are not foolproof knitters. All right, this next one may come as no surprise to you that it was a hit at the show because pet people are everywhere and pet people and knitting and crochet seem to go hand in hand. And I loved it because they were behind me in the booth so I could immediately see as soon as people came around the corner, whether they were a cat person <laughs> or a dog person or a both person. So we had these super fun uh, recycled plastic woven totes the, in both cat and dog styles. The cat says, nope, not today on one side in typical sarcastic cat fashion. And on the other side, it says, I do what I want. Also That's a cat. In typical cat fashion. And then I really like this pocket because this is also appropriate for knitting and crochet. 
you have a treats pocket. <laughs> That's funny. I never noticed it said that. You can that. put your little like <laughs> Chuck or Cherry snacks in there. And I love this. You have short hand carry handles and you have long shoulder carry handles. So they easily fit over your shoulder. They're super sturdy. I use mine all the time and it does not look like I've done a darn thing to it. I do a lot of like if my hand if my shoulders are already laden down with bags because I like to do this <laughs> I don't do two tricks thing then you do the short straps and just like tuck them right there at your elbow and then you can have plenty of carryability and if I pop one open with the gusset you can see they're like five to six inches wide so you've got lots of room for big projects multiple projects your yarn haul groceries if you're so inclined is to you know grocery shop yourself like a grown up your sweater project with all the yarn because you might run out right when you're out and about well if you're traveling especially really might run out so bring yeah seven, bring seven projects by definitely the other general Ooh. rule is bring seven seven projects yeah you know you didn't pack I, enough for disneyland yeah. I, no i have to up my game i was thinking three but i don't know which ones yet so and then oh yes marcia you need one for sure and then for the dog peeps you guys all know this is true too <laughs> be cool my dog is judging you dogs are great judges of character and then this one for the little pocket on the inside says good dog on the bone and then it says my dog likes you <laughs> we should get this one for kathy yeah <laughs> daniel's dog stitch loves her even though she's a cat person <laughs> he's breaking that barrier yeah so, maria it would hold a blanket as well for sure oh absolutely so again long handles or short handles in that nice woven material that's super durable Those bags are awesome. We sold so many of those at Stitches that like, cause people would come up and go, of course, you know, how much are the bags? It was like $12.99. Mine, done. <laughs> like, it was memorized at that point. <laughs> and that's, I mean, they're that affordable that it's like, yeah, okay, I can splurge and get the bag too. And so many people loved that they got the bag and then they got one of our pink bags for free too. So they got two bags for the price of one. And you guys can do the same because we still have the pretty pink bag with purchase going. Oops. And it is right behind Anna for anyone that has not seen it yet. Ooh, I can't zoom in. There almost, we go. I almost nuked my link. Don't do that. I didn't mean to. I accidentally hit delete instead of one in each hand for sure copy shiny pink bag okay so then the next item that was a smash hit for I sure be wearing hint hint wink wink nudge nudge so the on the spice market kit was a winner winner chicken dinner probably partially because Dolores was modeling it and she did a great job. Um, but this kit has one full skein of Dream and Color Smushy Cashmere, which is a Merino Cashmere Nylon Blend. Uh, let's see if I can read it on here. 70% Superwash Merino, 20% Cashmere, 10% Nylon, 400 yards for the full skein. Then you have six mini skeins. Two are like a medium mini skein and four are a small mini skein. So the two mediums have 134 yards in them and the, the four small have 100 yards in them. If you don't want to do them in color order, that is okay. You just, you can switch these four amidst one another and you can switch these two amidst one another. And one gal 
I think she must be doing like one of the color work sweaters where you use the colors in like the yoke at the top because she ordered three more of mm, these pretty. in the tumbleweed to go with her kit. So you're not limited to just the shawl either. You're just going to need more main color, which we can special order for you because we sold out of it. So this is the Think Natique color combo in those beautiful pinks and greens. Um, we have Scorched Lime and K Chameleon. Then we have Pinky, Liberation Light, Liberation, and Jocelyn. Very favorite pink colors. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. There were so many people that were like, I don't even like pink, but I love this. <laughs> then if you like more fall colors. Oh God, that's so pretty. I love this one. Like, love it. This is the kit that has to go home with me. I was so excited to knit this one. It's been on my list for years. Did you do the pink and green one? I did, yeah. Roxanne did this one? Yeah. So beautiful fall colors on this one. I love the stitch patterns on this shawl. You've got this really fun little, like they look like little lotus flowers. And then lots of easy garter stitch, some slip stitches to create this little like polka dot divider line. The beginning had some garter stitch with some little short row wedges. Those are the only short rows in there. Super easy. I like that you get all the short rows in while it's just on the plain easy knitting and not when you're doing all this right. fancy stuff. Because <clears throat> that's too many things to keep track of at once. Mm, no, I would do it. Well, unless you're Susan. <laughs> I would probably need multiple row counter chains True. to keep track of the, the things because I'm easily distracted and I'm okay admitting that. Alright, this one got a little jostled around in the schlepping home. So the fall colors kit has tumbleweed. Then for your two bigger minis, we have amber glass and gold experience. Then in the smaller minis, we have Tex-Mex, layer rose, fancy, and shadow box. I might need to do that colorway also. Right? I'm thinking I like that gal's sweater idea and mm -hmm. doing like Fair Isle in the yoke. Yeah. And then the body in the tumbleweed so that it's all about this beautifulness right here. Okay. I'm Start. Sure, I'm sure um, one of, oh, uh, what's her name? I like all of her Fair Isle patterns. Marie. Like that fern, gla fern grass or something like that. Hmm. I'll link it in the collective later when I remember her name. Jennifer Steingast? Maybe. I don't know. There's too many designers that I like. Yes, it would work perfect like that. Um, the Night Forest sweater that I did would work for mm, that yeah. as well. I think that one needed like three colors. Okay. There was one more thing I was going to show you, but it has not appeared in the boxes yet. <laughs> oh. Hmm. It was those small cat pouches. Oh, right. So, I'll show you those another day. But we will move on to talking about what upcoming classes we have. Then we'll talk about what we're wearing. I think they're all up there. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. If not, I won't show you all of them. <laughs> we can still talk this about them, but... In the unpacking from stitches. I don't know where everything is. Okay, two of them are here. Um, two of them are still in a box. Oh no, one's over here. Hold on. Okay. Oh, and one I think is in the back, but it's part two. Well, we got three of them, so. Ah, yes. We'll put it right here for now. Karen's gonna cringe. I know. <laughs> there's totes in my way. So, first up, starting. Friday, March 10th, that's tomorrow, 
Um, we have the Kashmina Cowboy Cowl. This is a two session class on the 10th and 24th to teach you all of the techniques involved in doing a easy to knit cowboy cowl. This one has a little bit of an eyelet lace pattern, some stockinette, some garter. Uh, so in class, we're gonna teach you how to do the garter tab to get started. Uh, we have you do a little practice piece, just cast on and knit two rows with some waist yarn so that we can practice the stitch pattern here that's before you join in the round because your homework is gonna be to get to the point of joining in the round before session two. We used one skein of the lusciously soft cashmina yarn and it's a little less yardage than the pattern calls for so you just stop early. Easy to do. What is the yarn again? Cashmina. Cash yeah. So. Just search Cashmina and That's it the, will up here. That's the Cashmina Cowboy Cowl. Yes. Super nice yarn to work with. Then coming up on Tuesday, March 14th, we have this beautiful Caples Creek Cowl. Um, this one is done in one skein of silky twist and one beaded silk in sequins, or you could do two silky twists. Um, we used that gorgeous Sierra Bloom colorway that is the latest in the Art Yarns Inspirations Club. So if you're in love with the color, just search Inspirations. It should come right up. Um, but this class is a two-hour class because we want to give enough time for you to get through this first chevron section and then the first drop stitch section, and we don't want anyone to feel rushed. Silky twist is so I know. It's so awesome. Definitely gonna need a sweater out of that. Then, okay, I'm gonna skip one because it's in a box somewhere still. Um, and then we have the Field Champion Cowl coming up on Tuesday, March 21st. This is the one that Boss Lady was modeling yesterday. It is a really easy variation on Feather and Fan. So we're gonna teach you the technique, how to keep track, and it'll give you this beautiful spiral design that is really accented by using a seven series colorway, which are in the Art Yarns Merino Cloud. That one is one of our exclusives. That is Athens. All right, so let me this link, well, I guess I don't really need to link the pattern for what I'm wearing for you guys because you might have that one figured out already. <laughs> but this is On the Spice Market by Melanie Berg. This is the pattern that the kits are for. The pattern is not included in the kits because it is not our pattern. So you do have to get it separately on Ravelry, which also makes sure it's in your library forever. Uh, versus like, yes, we could buy the pattern from her and put it in there. But then if you lose your pattern, now what? So if you purchase it directly on Ravelry, you have it forever. Unless something happens to Ravelry, which would be weird. That would be terrible. I feel like if something happens to Ravelry, something happens to the entire internet kind of thing. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it would be a big thing. So the odds are slim of anything happening to Ravelry. So this is, of course, the Think Natique combo of the kit. And the beautiful scarf cuff. Yep, in the pink rosette, which we did bring back some of these as well to the boutique. Um, I'm sure now that we're fully stocked on those again, Karen's going to do some zhuzhing and change mm -hmm. the countertop display because <laughs> they're a little crowded now. Um, so let me pop the link in and then I will turn this around for what Susan is wearing. Okay. Here's a champagne scarf cuff that was on the fall color spice market. Oh, you have it. That would mm -hmm. be really pretty. This is the one I think Dolores was modeling. I think she yes. was modeling that one. She was. All right. And Susan's dressed like it's cold in here. I know, because it, it is. Back here. This is Spectrum 
two strands fingering and lace weight. So a little bit of opacity, is that the right word? Yes. I think this side I know, has, it's such a weird word. This side has more. So you're alternating between holding the lace weight uh, mohair, like a mohair ombre one ply, and a fingering weight held double. So single strand lace weight, double strand the fingering and the lace weight to get those stripes. Yeah. Super fun, super warm, nice that's, and light. That's a TV knitting, travel knitting, because yeah, sure. all you have to pay attention to is how many rows you've done in your stripe. Knit a row, purl a row. Stick a row counter in there so you know how many rows you've done. Not even anything on the edge. And then you don't have to pay that much attention. Ta-da! All right, you guys, I think that's going to be it. Um, we have orders to pull for you. I see the little thing going between orders. Um, and then, as you saw, by boxes floating around in the background and a napping baby. Um, we still have <laughs> lots of stitches unpacking to do, so we'll sign off and get everything back on track. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.